Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with Castello Wellness and Adventist Health Partners, and I want to talk about a new study that came out linking testosterone therapy with heart disease in men. So this was a VA study, and I'm going to actually talk about three different VA studies. Uh, VA Veterans Administration, it's a great place to do medical studies because the men in these studies are generally much sicker than the general population, and if you're going to look at mortality or death rates over a time period, more guys are going to die that are from the VA than are healthy guys. So as an example, if you took 100 or 1,000 healthy men and you did a, any study and you wanted to see whether they died over a five-year time period, the problem may be that two guys die in one group and only one guy dies in the other group and it's either a 50% increase in death rate or the difference of one guy dying. When you have a thousand sick guys and 200 of them die in one study and 300 die in the other group study, then that's not a one guy difference, that's a hundred guy difference and that actually is a 50% uh, increased risk of death. So VA studies, high mortality rate for all causes, cancers, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, uh, kidney failure, all cause mortality. So the first study I want to talk about is a VA study where they looked at men's testosterone levels and whether they were going to survive for five years. They did no intervention. They just grouped the men into low testosterone, uh, average testosterone, or higher testosterone, and they saw who was around five years later. And it turns out very statistically significant that the lower your testosterone level was, the greater your chance of death. So that there were many more men in the low testosterone group that died than in the high testosterone group. This corresponds with ICU studies where they look at people in the intensive care unit and they look at their testosterone level at presentation. So the higher your testosterone level was when you went into the intensive care unit, regardless of why you were there, the greater chances you would survive the intensive care unit stay. So the high testosterone was um, consistent with surviving your ICU visit. The next, IC, the next uh, VA study they did was they actually gave men testosterone replacement that had low testosterone and compared them to a group of men with low testosterone who did not receive testosterone therapy. They watched these guys also over a five to ten year time period and counted up who died at the end of the time period. And it turns out that the men who received testosterone were much more likely to survive the time period than the men who did not receive testosterone. This is all cause mortality, so you're less likely to die of heart attack, stroke, cancer, emphysema. Whatever you died from, there were more guys alive at the end of the time period who received testosterone therapy. Also corresponds with the previous studies um, rating testosterone level and longevity. This most recent study, they took men with known heart disease, so they did angiograms on all these men and guys that had blockages of the arteries or heart disease were enrolled in the study. If you had low testosterone, had never been treated before, you were either randomized to receive testosterone therapy as gel to your skin or no testosterone therapy, and they watched who died of just heart attacks, not other causes of death. And the results of this study showed that the men with known heart disease or pre-existing heart disease who received testosterone therapy died more frequently of heart attacks than the men who did not receive testosterone. And that might seem obvious, but there were some very significant flaws to the studies. Uh, everybody got the same exact dose. They got it as a topical gel, so we don't know what men's testosterone levels were on therapy. They did not monitor testosterone levels. Um, no one had their estrogen or estradiol levels monitored, so we know that estrogen levels can go up when we give you testosterone, and there could be some complications of this. Uh, nobody had a blood count drawn, so we know that testosterone stimulates hemoglobin or the opposite of anemia, and your blood can actually get thicker and the treatment of it is is to donate blood to keep your hemoglobin level lower and it is a known risk factor that when your hemoglobin levels go up above 18 that you can have heart attack and stroke. They did not monitor this during the study at all. They did not monitor for fluid retention and weight gain so estrogen levels can cause weight gain and fluid retention and if you had heart failure along with your heart disease you may be more prone to heart failure and could have been treated with a diuretic. Um, they did not monitor blood pressure as well and most interestingly they did not monitor physical activity. And that can be important because if you have heart disease and you now start to feel better with testosterone and you start to have sex and have a heart attack or start going to the gym and lifting weights and have a heart attack, you're going to have more chances of dying with that. Uh, we know this for a fact when Viagra came out, we thought that Viagra was causing heart attacks because men took Viagra, had sex, had a heart attack and showed up in the emergency room after taking Viagra. What it turns out is, is that Viagra does not cause an increased 
risk of heart attack, but the physical activity of intercourse, when you haven't done it for 10 years, you may be predisposed to a heart attack. And the new warning labels, if you listen to the TV commercials, says make sure your heart is healthy enough to have sex, which means the same thing. If I'm going to put a snow shovel in your hand and say go out and shovel snow, I better be pretty sure that you're not going to have a heart attack shoveling snow. So Viagra going out and having sex, shoveling snow, being more active or taking testosterone and feeling better and going out and doing more physical things may predispose you to heart disease when you would have otherwise been sedentary and not had a heart attack. So um, the take home message is there may be an association with testosterone and heart attacks in men who have known heart disease. Um, you do need to see your cardiologist. If I see a patient who has known heart disease or diabetes, I'm a little bit more careful just intuitively that we need to be careful. We need to do stress tests. Uh, we need to know that they're going to be healthy for sexual activity or being able to go to the gym before I recommend going to the gym. So we always monitor blood counts as part of testosterone replacement. We always measure testosterone levels as part of therapy. And we always measure estradiol levels as part of therapy as well. So these are all things that if you do take testosterone therapy, you need to make sure your doctor is doing a very close follow-up every three months. If you have heart disease or suspicious for heart disease, you need to see the cardiologist and get a baseline stress test and probably about every two years on therapy. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.